So what's this called? This dish? It's mm -hmm. called fufu. Fufu, huh? This soup. Yeah, this is and the fufu. Pepper soup. Pepper soup. And the fufu. Yeah, and so it's just got lamb, baby, and fish. And mushroom. And this is like a regular popular dish in Ghanaian yeah, culture? Yeah, it's the Lima. Ah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's a national dish. Ah, jeez! Jeez! You scared the living daylight out of you. Oh, jeez. Wow. Hello. Hey. Hello, man. Hi boss, how are you? Good, 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 good. Are you ready for your acting debut? Uh, acting debut. <laughs> we often gather together, share a meal, um, whether it be after work, after uni for some of these gentlemen just to make sure that uh, I guess we build those bonds, um, stay really close and I guess yeah for us football is not just football it's more so us building the bonds with our team and just building those family ties and family bonds and as you can see we love sharing meals together um, whether it be traditional food whether it be takeout we often spend a lot of time together and I guess that shows. Team bonding is very important just because at the end of the day, football is there. But outside of football, I think that's the biggest thing. One thing all Ghanaians always know is that you always know a Ghanaian because they bring that culture from there to here. They will not lose their sense of identity, um, even though they're in Australia. The Ghanaian team has been in existence since the late 80s when the large majority of Ghanaians migrated to Australia. It started to take form in the late 90s, early 2000s when the African Cup was born for the first time in New South Wales. It has since then grown into a really competitive side. The Ghana team in the New South Wales African Cup They've always had, I guess, a big, big standard or a high standard to sort of, you know, uphold. We've been one of the first African nations where we've had a big group of us sort of migrate to Australia. We've always had that expectation to be a top team and to always be up there. The new generation, very young group of guys and, and gentlemen, but I think there's a lot of energy and I guess that's really really I find that's really good so when it comes to training you can kind of see that pretty much the boys are ready and hungry to play. Playing football from a young age in Ghana it's all about entertainment we're not privy to have television as most probably not everyone would so from a young age we're playing the streets and that's how we entertain ourselves and we've brought that here and we've tried to capture it through the teams that we've had in years gone by and we're trying to maintain that heritage that love that creativity that flair in our play in the generations the first um, Australian generations that are here so we hope to um, foster that um, through this forum Normally train at Kellyville. Usually it's either Kellyville, somewhere in Maryland. We play in community parks. So when we came to Wanderers, we were really, really um, grateful for their facilities. We found it really good. We like how professional it is. Soccer is a language that unites everyone. But even movement with dancing and African, it's just all about that flow that brings us together and we're all able to understand it. It's, it's great to be here first day of the tournament. It's, it's, you can see in the background that we, you know, we're just getting into the, into the groom, getting into the vibe. It's, it's all, we're just you know, thanking God for, for allowing us to be here, to get the inspiration, get the team spirit up, um, so we can display that on the field today. In um, all of our players were super excited. They already we had our training um, kits, and then the first time they saw our new playing strips, um, so they were super super excited. Yeah, the first game um, 
in any competition is uh, it's a hard one. Uh, emotions are flying, everyone's want to prove a point. We came in uh, with the, to the tournament. This was this is a road to recovery for us. We wanted to give a good showing, but we lost our keeper after 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Our backs were up against the wall. The boys dug deep. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. We went down to Cape Verde. It was, it was a tough weekend last week for us, you know. Um, we sort of just came into the tournament, like so many expectations from from ourselves, from from the coaches, from the community. So when we came here, it was like all this pressure, all this all these expectations, and unfortunately, we couldn't. Um, couldn't step up, step up to that. That was probably the first time Ghana has copped that much of a loss on our opening game. The first game we had was quite humbling, uh, going down to Cape Verde 4-0. Uh, Cape Verde pretty much, you know, I celebrated as if it was they'd won the grand final. Yep, South Africa had um, had game coming off 7-1 um, win versus our 4-0 loss. Um, we, our competition is at risk and we don't want to go out. Did every boy out there turned up today? Um, last week happened. It is what it is. It's in the past now. So all we can do is just go forward from here. Today we knew we had to win. Um, there was nothing but a win. Um, everyone, everyone from the bench to those who started, they knew we, we weren't going to accept anything but a win. So we came in and we did the job. We're coming off a high. Um, after 8-1, I told third game, said to the boys, go out and enjoy yourself, do nothing different, um, you know what you have to do. First half um, was very disappointing to be honest with you. Second half I just said to the boys, you've got 45 minutes left of the um, tournament to go, uh, it's up to you what you want to do from here. Very happy to get into the uh, next round um, and anything can happen from here. So we on Ghana rivalry goes back a long time in this competition, right back to the early 2000s. They've gone through a golden generation and still have some really good players left and we've, we've got some good young talent um, with mature talent. They want nothing more than to stop our recovery. And we want nothing more than to um, start our recovery with them. The way the boys played first half, it was tough. Both teams could have taken the lead. Second half, I think we really stepped, um, put our foot down and showed them that, yeah, we've got the guts and the grit to move on to the semi-finals. And I'm very proud of the boys coming through with the win. 3-0, um, wasn't expecting it, but very happy, static. Yeah, Congo, um, they, they pretty much um, told us coming to this game that they were going to teach us a football lesson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Saturday, uh -huh. 
<laughs> and we accepted um, to be taught a lesson. We were ready to learn. I'm truly proud of the boys that it didn't succumb to pressure um, on a day. Um, and I'm very proud of them, ecstatic that they accepted the challenge. So we're step by step proving that we're on the road to recovery. It's been an outstanding tournament uh, this year and I think firstly the partnership with the Wanderers has just been an incredible platform to launch I think um, this and in future competitions with. And so I think in terms of this year though it's certainly made it a very special event and a special occasion. Um, having just access to an amazing facility, um, professional setup, it's just been really, really next level, I think. We come into this final with a lot of confidence and um, I think we're well prepared. Uh, I think having the battle scars at the earlier rounds of the tournament has definitely given us uh, a lot of grounding. And so from there, we're going into this final with a lot of confidence and um, sober judgment, so. Starting off, a lot of pressure on both teams. Sudan have been absolutely brilliant throughout the tournament, second to none. The coaching staff said to the boys, you've proved to everyone that you deserve to be here. And your road to recovery, you've, you've really embraced it. And now the, it's, the destiny is in your hand. What you, what you do today is all your hard work. The atmosphere was wild. I hadn't been playing in front of that many people before. Walking out, there was definitely a lot of nerves. And we had to really draw in our experience to get us through the final. Strong. We were playing some good football and they seemed like they didn't, they weren't ready for it. They were sort of overall by experience more than we were. got that early goal, much to their surprise, and that unsettled them and gave us a lot of confidence to push on. Then the second goal came, which left them quite rattled and not knowing what to do. Halftime gave them a bit of an opportunity to really look at things. Credit to the boys, they didn't take that step back and they kept going at Sudan. We got the goal, that set them back a bit. And credit to Sudan, they didn't um, relent. They got one back. Emotions are running everywhere. We didn't get a lucky break, which um, I thought, yes, lucky, but we truly deserved it. Last kick of the game, Sudan gets a goal. Over time, 
Freddie got the ball on the left wing, had his man one on one, took him inside, put him on his right foot and just cracked it from about 24, 25 yards out. <laughs> We're thinking like, that's it, you know, let's defend, let's just keep the lead. And we couldn't keep it, they got a last minute goal. So Josh is a fairly confident guy. He's probably the youngest in the squad, but you know, he's got that persona about him where he's confident in what he does. When I was walking, I had a, um, I had a mission to do, and I knew I was gonna do, um, secure it. I knew I was gonna win it. <laughs> This is something that I've never been a part of before in my life. The, the bond and the closest that, that, that we have as boys. I am feeling relieved, excited, happy, every emotion you can think of. Oh, amazing. Can't, words can't explain it. It's been seven years now since we all won the championship. It's family on and off the pitch. Um, we eat together, we train together. Today, the boys made me so proud. They make it so easy to coach, and yeah, I just couldn't be proud, more proud of the boys. Unbelievable.
here at Little Lagos having a meal and a chat. Um, it's Ghana's 64th Independence Day, so we're super excited. Uh, when we first spoke, we were preparing for the tournament and training really hard to um, ensure that we won the tournament. And today we return as the 2020 African Cup of Nations winners. Um, it was our, after our hard work and dedication, it all paid off. being together is everything to us. It's something that we do on, I guess, every occasion, whether it's happy times, sad times. Um, just being together brings us a sense of community, a sense of purpose. Returning as a champions, um, it's even more like exhilarating. And I guess it's something that we strive to achieve from the beginning. And especially with us, um, I guess, being in the tournament for so long, but the first time partner, uh, partnering with the Wanderers, um, it means even more to us, um, this win, so, yeah. Ghana 2020 champions, how does it feel? Feels amazing. <laughs> oh, shit. Feels great, feels amazing. <laughs> oh. They welcomed me from the start um, and right to the end, and I, I feel like I'm part of a team and part of a family, it was awesome. And look, honestly, if, if 2021 came around and they asked me to play again, I'd be more than happy to. It was, it was amazing, great experience. And I was a privilege to be representing Ghana today. Thank you, and thank you to the Wanderers. Thank you to um, New South Wales African Cup organization, all the administrators, um, in particular Bernard and Mari, and all the support and crew. Um, we couldn't be, have done this um, without, without them. And to you, thank you. Thank you for all your support. Um, really appreciate it. Um, when it was raining, you were there. Um, when it was sunny, you were there, and I'm glad you're here to enjoy it with us. I did tell you, don't finish it till the final. <laughs> so I'm glad you did it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you so much.